Welcome guys to the ultimate Rika guide. That's right, I want to talk about Rika the date I have played, uh, the deck I have played to Master 1 this season. For those of you who have followed uh, the climb, yes, I have reached Master 1 off stream then. And I have to say the deck is really nice, really strong. And now I want to teach you how to play it. We will at first go over the deck list and I will basically explain the task of every card, card by card. Then I have a different version for you with 60 cards that I quickly want to show you. And then I will show you the basic combo that I have learned at the beginning, the going first combo. Then I will show you the combo that I have discovered that is better than the version I found and I couldn't find anywhere online. So I have created a superior version in my opinion with better negation on the end board. And then I will also show you the combo you can use to kill your opponent opponent if you are going second which is also quite easy first things first is this deck strong how strong is this deck i think firstly this is a really fun deck i hadn't had that much fun playing a deck in a long time is it strong i think it's upper tier 2 deck uh, maybe in the middle of tier 2 and this also depends a bit on the meta i think the matchup against tier elements uh, as of right now is pretty bad but this will leave the meta so that's fine i think against kash this is a bit better though it will also struggle against the fact that kashira risehard will banish everything because you need your stuff in the graveyard to continue your place this deck suffers a lot from being max seed because for example, if you play T Elements and you are getting Max Seed, then you can still, let's imagine you have your um, T Elements Rhino Heart, you go Rhino Heart, pitch something into the grave, make your Kit Colors, and then search your trap, which this is quite nice. You only give your opponent one card more and you have a really strong follow up. The follow up you want to go for with Rika, if you can get into it with basically one special summon, otherwise you should maybe not do it, is that you go to your Mudan, the Rika Fairy Witch. This you can already uh, note down is one of the most important cards in the deck because this searches you the field spell which the field spell is super strong maybe the strongest card in the deck which then searches you the trap so what you then want to do if you get max seed but we will talk about this deeper in a moment then for example you normal summon your sun seed genius loci get max seed because your opponent knows you have a link one in the dryers here then you can if you have it go for the mudan search your field spell and search your trap which then you have an okay setup going into the next turn uh, where you can maybe stop your opponent um, other hand traps or negations like imperm or ash are also a big problem for the deck if for example your tree gets ashed or impermed then this can can be the end of your play so this deck is pretty rough going second uh, which you can also see by this list running triple evenly matched and basically every Rika list running triple evenly matched though you don't need to but then your going second capabilities are even worse going first if you can do your full combo then you will end up on a pretty impressive board that I will show you when I show you the going first normal combo and then the advanced combo that I would suggest because it's just better. Let's talk about the deck. What does this deck want to do? So this deck is the most combo deck that you will ever see. This is also indicated by the fact that on turn one you will lose, uh, you will use a lot of your extra deck, which makes it quite tough to do an effective second turn because you already have used up so many resources of your extra deck. So this is basically a deck that wants to build a big board that your opponent cannot break. Then your opponent tries to break it, he can't. It's your turn again, or he just gives up and you kill him. Then this is what this wants to do. If this board that you establish on your first turn, the full board, if this gets broken by your opponent then you have a big problem killing him on the next turn. This is also why the Therion package is in here. Note that you do not need to play the Therion package. There are also variants without that, but I would suggest playing it because it's really strong and this is the only negation that protects you against stuff like Evenly Match, which at the moment is uh, in the meta, um, is very prevalent in the meta. And this is a problem because if your end bot gets Evenly Match, then yeah, that's basically it. And the Therion can negate that. Though I will also show you a cool thing that you can do with my advanced combo where you are basically also I would say safer from evenly matched but not totally safe that's why you want your Therion King regulus package but as I already said you don't need to but we will talk about this in a moment let's start here you have a normal summon monster in the deck which <laughs> this is quite uh, unusual because normally no deck plays this this is the best normal summon in the game the best normal summon in your deck this is Sunseed Genius Loci uh, and all of the cards that you can see here for example the unexpected die in the bigger version the small world and also the Lone Fire Blossom have 
the tasks to get you your genus loci because in an optimal world you want this in your starting end this alone can get you to your complete end board this is one card combo because this can go into the link one the sun avalon dryas and then because you have made this thing here in the extra monster zone that's important with the seed then you can search your sunvine sowing with then which then extends your combos even further. If, for example, you make the dryers, which needs one level four or lower plant monster with your Rika Petal, which is level one monster, which you can do, you won't be able to search this. So it's really important to start with this if you want to go full combo. If you want to access your Sun Avalon package, because it's called Rika Sun Avalon. Rika are these girls with the umbrellas here, and Sun Avalon are, for example, the seed and cards like the dryers, the healer, or the thresher. Um, and you could also somehow count the Bengal Lancer because this basically is the end thing, uh, also the Melias, but this is the end monster that you want to get out uh, concerning your Sun Avalon package. So uh, this tree in combination with this, so if you make the tree with the loci, I will show you this in the combo guide, you uh, basically have access to your Sun Avalon package, which then gives you access to your Rika engine. Sometimes you will have a game where you only have your Rika engine and then you will end up on a different board. The first Rika card that we have, which is quite nice, is Rika Patal. So it says during your main phase you can take one Rika monster from your deck except Rika Patal and either add it to your hand or send it to the graveyard. Also important, you cannot special summon for the rest of this turn except plant monsters. So this is basically your Rika searcher which can search, can search you your uh, other Rika monsters or can send them to grave which can be important for the Rika princess that we will come to in a moment. Keep in mind though that some cards in the deck lock you into only summoning plant monsters. Um, for example the Rika Petal. You your uh, Rika Konkon, uh, also a Rika, the Rika Fairy Snowdrop here, and uh, let me think about this, I think these are all locking you into plants, which is important because Therion King Regulus is a machine, thereby you won't be able to summon this, but in the combo it's like it's, it's structured that way that you can get your regulars out before you activate your pedal. So that's not a problem, but you have to keep that in mind if you have to do different combos, that once you use the pedal, uh, the Kokon effect, or the Snowdrop, the Rika Fairies effect, you won't be able to summon Therion King regulars anymore. So keep that in mind. And then, this has a second effect, because why not? It says, during your opponent's end phase where this card is in your graveyard, if you control no monsters or all monsters you control are plants, you can special summon this card. So this is really nice when this is in the grave and you will use this on your first turn combo. You will get it back if you have no monsters or all plant monsters, which both of these can happen if your opponent breaks the board or if you keep your board. All of them are basically plants besides Therion King Regulus, but you will sometimes give him up to negate, so maybe he's no longer on the board. Then you can use this resummon this and obviously that's quite nice because then on your turn you can use this to once again search a Rika monster and then also use this as material and this happens during the end phase of your opponent so not in like his battle phase or something which obviously wouldn't make sense but then he is not really able to react to this so this is a pretty nice card Rika petal that is basically your best normal summon Rika if you don't have access to your Sunseed genius loci because this can search you for example your Mudan so one thing you want to do under Maxi if you can, you go for your Rika Petal, searching your Mudan, then going into your field spell and going into the trap, ending with the Mudan on the field, the Kong Kong, and the field spell. The trap, sorry. Then we have Triple Maxi, it's just Maxi. Uh, and then we have Sun Seed Twin. This is also part of your Sun Avalon uh, package and uh, normally will be summoned by your Sun Vine Sewing. This says if this card is normal or special summoned while you control a Sun Avalon Link monster, so this one, this one, this one, or this one, then you. You can target one level for a lower plant normal monster this one here only this one because this is the only normal monster and you can special summon it this is part of the beginning part of the combo which i will show you and then the second effect also part of the combo so also important but not really that important in like any other aspect of gameplay this is only important for the combo if you are missing some crucial pieces i will show you that in a moment then you can also banish this card in your graveyard and one link monster you control and if you have two or more plant link monsters normally this will be your healer 
so if you have two or more planned link monsters with the same name as each other in your graveyard, two healers for example, special summon one of them and you can only use this self sun seed twin once per turn. So this is part of the combo line. Then you have your Lone Fire Blossom, which there is not a lot of text, but it's really interesting, a really cool card that can get you to basically anything into your deck. Once per turn, you can tribute one phaser plant monster, so this here, and special summon one plant monster from your deck. So this can basically special summon everything besides obviously your hand traps and your Therion King regulars. So really, really nice, can get a really important part of interruption, but that I will show you in the combo videos and also in the 60 card list. So this is quite crucial, really important, also a cool starter that you can use if you don't have your loci, then you can normal summon this, activate effect, summon the loci, and then you have full combo. Combo. Keep in mind though that this can be ashed and then it's pretty bad because this also is then gone from the field. Though the part of the effect once per turn you can tribute one phase up plant monster semicolon so this is cost so this cannot be reacted to by infinite impermanence which this is quite nice but can still be ash obviously. Then we have ash nothing to say here. Um, yeah, it's just Ash, it's just nice. Then we have Primula, the Ricker Fairy, which says if a monster you control is tributed. So um, part of the theme of Rika Sun Avalon is that you can tribute your own monsters or your opponent's monsters via the field spell. So the field spell basically allows you to tribute your opponent's monsters for cost to activate your card uh, card's effect. Otherwise, you will tribute your own plant monsters. So this is if a monster you control is tributed, you can special summon this card from your hand in defense position. This is basically only used as an extender because we need an extra body. We will search this uh, with our uh, Rika spell here and then we will be able to summon her just to have another level four body because she level four and the Rika princess level four will be able to get us into Rika queen Strenna, two level four monsters. She's very important for the combo, which I will show you in a moment. And then there is a bonus effect. You can special summon this card. Oops, you can target up to two plant monsters monsters you control increase the level by two until the end of this turn etc. This can come up if for example you have two mood on the Ricker fairy you could increase their level to be level eight and two level eights make teardrop the Ricker queen one of your boss and monsters on the board. So this is why there is Primula the Ricker fairy. Um, keep in mind though that if a monster you control is tributed so keep in mind that for example for this card, you need to tribute a plant monster if you want to activate this card's bonus effect. If you have your field spell online, you can also tribute one of your opponent's monsters. But if you then search your Primula, then this will not be able to be special summoned because you have tributed an opponent's monsters, not your own. Keep that in mind, it's very important in some capacities. Then we have Rika Princess, we have a free of, uh, of this card and that is because this card is just amazing. It says during your main phase, you can special summon this card from your hand, but while it is face up in the monster zone, you cannot special summon monsters except plant monsters. So this also is a lock that uh, basically restricts you from summoning your three ranking regulars, though this is only if this is on the field and you want this card in the graveyard, so this will not stay on the field. So it's not really a plant lock. So you can special summon her and you don't need anything to special summon her, so you don't need a Rika monster on the field you can just special summon her which this is already nice and then this is the most important and coolest part when your opponent activates a monster effect while you control a Rika monster so this you need to have quick effect you can shuffle this card from your hand or your graveyard so this can even be in your hand into the deck and tribute one plant monster with your Rika Kong Kong on the field you can also tribute an opponent's monster for this activation of the effect but you can also tribute your own negate that effect uh, so you negate that effect I was I was putting the the um, speech on the wrong part. So you can negate the effect. It's a monster negate and it needs you to tribute one monster. You can tribute your opponent monsters if you have the Concon online and this will be shuffled into the deck. Um, note here that the part where this card is shuffled into the deck is uh, the cost of the card. You can shuffle this card from your hand or graveyard into the deck and tribute one plant monster. So <laughs> I had this or I made this mistake once, um, a shuffler, so the Ishizu shufflers cannot sh react to this. So this card will already be back in the deck when your opponent can react and then he can obviously no longer shuffle it from your graveyard into your deck because it's already in there because it's part of the cost. Obviously your opponent could do this early and just once this card is in your graveyard, decide to shuffle it back. So yeah, if you play against Rika, then you want to shuffle this back as early as you can. But just keep that in mind. This is part of the cost. Hence, you can just activate this and this card will no longer be in the grave. So you also cannot go called by the grave on this card if this has already activated. But you can do B 
beforehand. So if you see this in your Rika's opponent's grave, then try to remove it by Court of the Grave. This is one of the best targets for it. Otherwise, it's a monster negate. Then we have Mudan, one of the core cards and definitely the Rika card that you want to search if you can. The second one uh, that's also most important, I would say, is the Princess, because if you have her in the grave or in the hand, it's a cool monster negate. But keep in mind that you need a Rika card onto the field, otherwise there is no monster negate. That's why this card is the most important one. You can tribute one plant monster, you can also tribute your opponent's monsters if you have your field spell online. You can tribute one plant monster, special summon this card from your hand, and this, this card is normal or special summoned. Uh, or special summoned by the effect of a plant monster. So basically, if this is special or normal summoned, you can add one Rika spell or trap from a deck to your hand. Basically, always you want to add your Rika Konkon. Then Konkon can add you your Rika Glamour. If you already have one of these in your hand, you can add the one that is missing. So we have three. We have the Sheet, the Glamour, and the Konkon. Normally, in the normal combo, it will go like this. You add the Konkon with your Mudan, and Konkon can then search your Glamour. But if, for example, you already have the Glamour in the hand, you can then search your Sheet. But, or if you already have your Sheet in the hand, then you would search your Glamour. Uh, for example, as I already told you, if you get Maxi, you want to go, let's say you have normal summon petal, he maxes you, then you search your Mudan, you attribute your petal for your Mudan, and then you don't need, or you can search your, you can search your Rika Kong Kong then, and then you can search your trap card. We will come to the trap card in a moment, but that's basically what you want to do if you get maxed. Then we have Snowdrop, of the Rika Fairy. This card is basically, the job of this card is to enable you to go into your Teardrop, the Rika Queen, because you can tribute one plant monster. You can also tribute your opponent's monster. Special summon both this card and one other plant monster from your hand. Also, you cannot special summon for the rest of this turn except plant monsters. So this is one of the locks. Keep that in mind. And also very important, if you want to use this effect, you need to have another monster in hand that you can also um, summon because it says both this card and one other plant monster. If you only have this card, you cannot activate her. You need another plant monster, which in the combo you will have. And then you can target one plant monster you control and all plant monsters you currently control become that monster's level until the end of this turn. This is level eight, so you will just target this here and then every other monster becomes level eight, enabling you to go into Teardrop the Rika Queen, uh, which I will show you in the combo. Then we have the Therion package. So it's Therion Lady Borea, it's Therion King Regulus, and then it's also Therion Discolosseum. Keep in mind that if you want to craft this engine here, uh, it's not bad. This can be fitted into a lot of decks, though some decks will also run the Therion engine with the... Um, how is this guy called? Uh, it's this... Uh, so so not every not every deck is running the field spell to search the King Regulus. There's also the gigantic champion sagas. I can I think I can search him with sagas. Uh, some of the decks will also um, search uh, the uh, Theon King Regulus with sagas here. So if you craft the field spell, you might end up with a deck um, other than Rika that will need the sagas in addition. So these are obviously two ultra rares that you need to craft and you can't really pull them from everywhere. So you have to think about this, but I think if you really want to play this deck at full strength, go for this, this is important. The 60 card version will play three Lily Borea. I will show you 60 card in a moment and we will also, or I will also show you the combo with the 60 card version because there's a special card in there that you should also put in this 40 card version. But I just recently discovered the advanced technique there that I will show you in a moment. So how does this work? You have your Lily Borea, which says you can only use each of the following effects of Therion Lily Borea once per turn. So the basic thing that you want to do is the first effect. You can target one Therion monster or one plant monster in your graveyard, so basically everything here. Special summon this card from your hand, and if you do, equip that monster to this card. And then you can send one card from your hand or field to the graveyard. You would send the monster that you have just equipped here and add one Therion spell trap from your deck to your hand. Then you get this to your hand, the Disc Colosseum, and when this is activated, you can add Therion monster from your deck to your hand, then you add your King Regulus. And then you only need to get your Lily Borea into your grave because then you can target the Lily Borea because it says you can target one Therion monster or one machine monster in graveyard. So you can target the Lily Borea and then special summon the King Regulus and then you equip the Lily Borea to the King Regulus in the spell and trap zone. And King Regulus has the effect when your opponent activates a card or effect. So this is an Omni Negate quick effect. You can send one Therion monster card from your hand or face up field to the graveyard, negate that effect. And also also, this 
comes up. A Theron monster equipped with this card gains 700 attack. Also, it can can activate the second effect listed above at, at if, as if it were Therion King Regulus. So, so you can also equip this. So, so if this gets equipped, this will have more attack. Same thing for Liliborea. So this can come up if you want to battle over something. So this is an Omni Negate, which basically needs to send a Therion monster from field or hand to the graveyard. So you have this on your field and then you have your Liliborea equipped to it. So you can negate once, sending your Liliborea to the graveyard and then you can negate again next turn only once per turn and then you would need to send your king regulus to the graveyard or you maybe have another lady borea in hand that you can then send so um at the first turn this is basically an omni negate that you can use two times um but only once per turn but you have two activations but we will go over um, this uh, when I show you the combo. Unexpected Die is only there to summon your Sunseed Genius Loci, and it only can summon Sunseed Genius Loci if you control no monsters, special summon one level four lower normal monster from the deck. This is also nice because then you have a normal summon left, which you can use to make your board even better. And then we have the core spell card of the normal spell card, that is of the Rika archetype. It says, when you activate this card, you can also tribute one plant monster. You can also tribute one of your opponent's monsters monsters but you don't have to add one Rika monster from your deck to your hand then if you tributed a monster when you activated this card so only if you have done this add one plant monster with the same original level as that Rika monster but a different name from your deck to your hand so this can search you two cards if you tributed a plant monster but keep in mind that this card is also a, just a normal search card so if you wanted to you can just activate this pay no cost and then just search a Rika card for example your Mudan or your Petal so what you want to do with this in your combo is you want to tribute a plant monster then you want to uh, pick your primula the rica fairy or your rica princess because both of them are level four and keep in mind that you need to get uh, or you can add two cards one rica card and one other plant monster with the same level so you would be able to add these two to your hand you can also add your snowdrop the rica fairy she's level eight and this allows you to add your Therion lily borea because she's also level eight what you can also do is, and this is really important, if you don't have your Sunsea Genius Loci, you could add it via activating this, tributing something, and then adding your Rika Petal, because she's the Rika monster that you add, she's level one, and then you can add another plant monster that's also level one also a not Rika monster. So this is then your Sunsheet Genius Loci. So you can either search one Rika monster or you can tribute a plant monster, also your opponents if you have Concorn on the field. And then you can search a Rika monster and another plant, doesn't have to be a Rika, with the same level. And then we have Sunvine Sowing. This is only used in the deck to be activated. Um, as, so you search it with your Dryas and then you activate it to summon your Sunseed Twin. This is basically everything this card does. And it says, special summon one Sunseed monster from your deck. And if you do, take 1000 damage. This year, this taking 1000 damage is important because this triggers the tree to summon another monster. If you, for example, have the tree and then normal summon the Sunseed Twin, then you can't really go full combo. You would need to go over this card. Um, Keep in mind though that this can also special summon the genius loci. So could also special summon this, but normally it is used to summon this here, okay? And then this has a bonus effect. For the rest of this turn after this card resolves, you cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck except plant monsters. So this locks you, this extra deck locks you, but obviously this is no problem for regulus because regulus is not extra deck. And then if a plant link monster you control would be destroyed by battle on opponent's card effect, you can banish this card from your graveyard instead. So this is protection. This basically works like um, branded opening if a fusion monster gets destroyed. Then we have this Colosseum, which I already mentioned. This card is to add a Therion card, but this also has a bonus effect. Once per turn, if your monster would be destroyed by battle, you can send one Therion card or one whatever this is from your deck to the graveyard instead, and then it's basically not destroyed. So this is not really important in this version here, but in the 60 card version, you have three Boreas in the deck. So if this ends up on your end board, then you could send a Borea to protect one of your monsters. And then also once per turn, when a monster is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you can target one Therion monster in your graveyard and add it to your hand. So in theory, if this is in your graveyard because you have used it, used it and this is still on your field, so normally you would definitely want your Concon on the field because this is way better. But let's say both of them are destroyed and you have this on the field, then you could, for example, if one thing gets destroyed, 
bet, uh, add back the thing, uh, the regulars to your hand so you can use it once again. So just keep this in mind. This is not only your searcher. This has bonus effects that can be important if it comes up. Then we go or we come to Kong Kong, which Kong Kong is super important. This is the core spell card of the deck, your field spell. If you control a Rika monster, so you need a Rika monster, keep that in mind. You can set one Rika spell trap directly from your deck to your spell trap zone. Also, you cannot special summon monsters for the rest of this turn except plant monsters. So this plant locks you. You will basically always want to search your glamour to further your place. But as I already said, if you are Maxed, then you want to go Mudan, field spell and then trap because you don't want to special summon anymore. And then you can only use this effect of Rika Kong Kong once per turn and once per turn. This is the important effect that I already we talked about with basically every card that can tribute something once per turn if you would tribute a plant monster you control to activate a Rika card or effect you can tribute any one face up monster your opponent controls even though you do not control it so this enables you to tribute your opponent's monsters for the effect of Mudan for the effect of Snowdrop for the effect of Princess for what else is tributing here for the effect of Glamour I think these are all the tribute effects and in theory no this doesn't make any sense because this this tributes a monster, but this just tributes an opponent's monster all the time. So forget what I'm saying here. Then we have evenly matched. I don't need to explain this. Infinite impermanence. Don't need to explain this. And then Ricochet. So this is your trap, which is really strong. Oh yeah, by the way, this is also uh, a card that you can use uh, together with this to tribute an opponent's monster. Target one face-up monster your opponent controls. Also, you can tribute one plant monster. You don't have to. Same thing with the glamour here. You can also tribute your opponent's monster if this is on the field. Target one face-up monster your opponent controls. Also, you can tribute one plant monster. Players cannot activate that face-up monster's effect on the field this turn. And then, if you tributed a monster when you activated this card, take control of that monster until the end phase. And if you do, it becomes a plant monster until the end phase. So, let's understand this. You can, if you have this online, tribute one of your opponent's monsters and then take control of another of your opponent's monsters. So, if your opponent has two monsters on the field, let's say a level 3 tuner and a level 7, and he's about, about to make his Baron de Fleur, you can then tribute one of them and take the other one. But you have to understand how this card works if you don't tribute, because then it's not that great. Because then it's only target one face a monster your opponent controls. And let's imagine you don't tribute here. And then players cannot activate that face up monster's effect on the field this turn. Please understand that if your opponent has already activated a monster effect, so for example, he activates his Rhino Heart, and then you activate this and target the Rhino Heart, then the effect will still go through because this only says that your opponent cannot activate effects anymore, but it doesn't say it negates activation. So, for example, if your opponent has a Kit Colors on the field and then wants to activate Kit Colors effect because um, the first effect of Kit Colors is an automatic search effect, this you cannot negate, but you could after the first effect went through, you could use Eureka Sheet, target the Kit Colors, and then Kit Colors second effect, which is a trigger effect that you have to activate via clicking, cannot be activated anymore. So please understand this. Without tributing, this card isn't really that great. It's not even a negation. It's only a your opponent cannot activate it effect, which is quite weak. So let's come to the extra deck. And this is already quite a long video, but I think you will want to look at this if you really want to understand this deck in depth. So Rika Queen Strenner, or let's let's basically start with your Sun Avalon Dryas here. Sun Avalon Dryas is basically the start into your Sun Avalon um, part, as I already said. It needs one level four or lower plant monster. If this card, I already talked about this basically, if this card is linked summoned in the extra monster zone, always in the extra monster zone, otherwise it doesn't work. Using Sun Sea Genius Loka, this one, you can add one Sunbind spell trap from your deck to your hand. And this one, the sewing here. And then it also says this card cannot be targeted for attacks, but not, does not prevent your opponent from attacking you directly. Once per turn, if you take bad law effect damage, this one here, that's why this is important. Once per turn, if you take bad law effect damage, you can gain that much life points. And if you do, special summon Sunwind monster from your deck. This comes up. And then we have the healer. If a Sun Avalon Link monster you control leaves the field by card effect, destroy this card. Not really that important. If this special summoned, if this is card is special summoned, you can target one Sun Avalon Link monster on the field and gain life points equal to the link rating. So what's important about this is this triggers the effect of Aroma Seraphy Jasmine. That's why this is important. Then we have Thrasher, which is basically the card that enables you to kill your opponent on uh, the second turn. But I will show you this in the combo line because it's easier to understand then. And then we have Sun Avalon Melias, which is a link free monster. You need two plant monsters, including a link monster. 
If this card is Link Summoned, you can Special Summon one Sand Seed Genius Loka from your grave. So you can basically use this, Special Summon this, and then climb up in your uh, Link 4 Bengal Lancer. I will show you this in a moment. We will talk about these cards in a moment uh, when I show you the combo. This, the Bengal Lancer, is one of your end bot monsters, which says during the main phase quick effect, you can target one effect monster your opponent controls. Has to be an effect monster. Take damage equal to its attack, and if you did take damage, return it to the hand. So this is a bounce. And then also important if this card is in your graveyard, because this is important for the advanced combo that I basically found out that's way better because we will use this there. If this card is in your graveyard, you can banish two or more link monsters from your graveyard whose combined link ratings equal exactly four. So for example, your Melias link three and your Dryas link one, this makes four. And then you can special summon this card, but banish it when it leaves the field. Okay, we have already seen this type of effect on other monsters. Mm, then we have the Sylvian Dance Beyond. This is a card you don't need need because it's also an ultra rare, but this is a card you use in desperate situations when you basically need more monsters on the field and can't do anything else. This needs to plant monsters, so this is not this is basically the only card in here that is not part of your basic first turn combo. Every other card you will use. So you don't use two Strenners, but you will use a Strenner, but you don't use a Sylvian Dance Beyond. This is a bonus card. It says, if this card is Link Summoned, you can choose a number from 1 to 3. You will always choose 3 and excavate that many cards from the top of your deck. And if you do, you can special summon up to 2 excavated plant monsters. But they cannot be used as Link material. Also send the remaining cards to the graveyard. So if you are lucky, you can special summon 2 extra monsters with this, but can't be used as Link monsters. But that's okay, because this also says you can target one plant monster in your graveyard that has a level. The levels of monsters this card points to, so 2, you have 2 Link arrows so you can for example if you can special summon two monsters with this effect you can put them in the link zones and then you can make the level of the monsters you have special summoned become the level of a monster in the graveyard so let's say you hit two mudans here which are level six you summon them into the link columns here and then you can for example target your rika princess level four in the graveyard and both of them here become level four which is important because two level four monsters equal your rika queen strenner so let's talk about strenner next uh, this is part of your import this is part of your import also this and your yeah these are the extra monsters part of your import rika queen strenner really important card Two level four monsters. You can detach one material from this card, then target one plant monster or Rika card in your graveyard, add it to your hand. So you can basically add everything back to your hand with the Rika King Strenner, uh, besides your Thedion King Regulus, of course, and the Disc Colosseum. Um, and then, if this card with XYZ material is tributed, you can special summon one rank of four higher plant XYZ monster from your extra deck or graveyard, and then you can attach this card to it as material. So you can then target your teardrop the Ricker Queen or your Sacred Tree Beast Hyperiton. It's important to note that this card here, you can't summon you, you only can summon this card via your Strenna, while you can also summon the Ricker via your uh, Snowdrop, the Ricker Fairy, and maybe Snowdrop together with a uh, Lily would also work because they are both, le both level 8. So you always want to basically summon this one here because this one you can't summon otherwise. So this is really nice. This can, this can also summon them from the graveyard. So tributing this because you can basically you can tribute her with this card, with this card, with this card, with this card. There's a lot of ways to tribute this card and then this can go into one of your XYZ higher monsters, though you always want to make this basically. Let's look at this card, which is also part of the end board. During your turn, when you activate a card or effect, quick effect, you can target one card of the same type, monster, spell, or trap in your graveyard, attach it to this card as material. So normally, so, so to understand this, you have this card on the field and you activate a monster effect. This allows you then to put another card from the graveyard under this card as material, a monster card. So if you have a spell card in the graveyard and then you activate another spell card, then this can add the first spell card from the graveyard to its material. And then during your opponent's turn, when a card or effect is activated, quick effect, this can basically negate. But this can only negate what it has under it as material. So if you only have monsters under this, this can only negate monster effects. If you have spell cards under it or trap cards, this can then also negate spell or trap cards once per turn. Keep that in mind. And then we have Teardrop the Rika Queen, which is your level 8 end boss tier monster, uh, not tier monster, Rika monster, uh, which says you can detach one material from this card and target one monster on the field, tribute it. You can also tribute your own monster if you want to, so you could tribute your Strenner, which then Strenner goes into your Sacred Tree Beast if you wanted to, but 
basically you want to tribute your opponent's monsters obviously this makes sense and this is a quick effect if this card has a plant monster as material which basically it always has and then this has another pretty useless effect you can only use this effect of okay not this one but the other it's the other thing is each time a monster is tributed this card gains 200 attack for each until the end of this turn this is pretty useless and can also be quite dangerous because um i had this once where this activated my opponent's triple tactics talents so this was really bad, but this is also part of your end board. So now we have talked about every card here and now I will show you the three combos. The first combo, the basic combo, then my advanced combo, which is bad, better and you should always go for. And then the going second kill combo. But before I do this, let me quickly show you the Rika 60 card list. Obviously, if you want to build your 60 or your Rika deck in general, check out Master Duel Meta for um, card lists, for like um, actual card lists. Obviously, this list is attuned to the current meta. And as you can see here, uh, we basically have cards like the Fenry in here, a Duster, we have Triple Lily Borea, we have Triple Tactics Talents, we have the Called By and the Crossout, we have Small World just to search for your Lokai, which this is quite nice this can basically search your loca via every other card uh, so you can bridge with basically every plant monster into your loci um, the only thing that you know you can even do it with Fenrir because Fenrir can go over the maxi into the loci so I think that you can reach your loci with every card Therion could also go over the maxi um, this is not 100% confirmed but I think every card in your starting end could go into a loci Keep that in mind. That is really nice with the small world. And then there's also another interesting card here, which will be part of the advanced combo, Naturia Rose Whip, which this says your opponent can only activate one spell trap card each turn. You could also use the Cactus Bouncer. This is the other part that you could use. Cactus Bouncer says, cannot be special summoned while another plant monster is on the field. Neither player can special summon monsters. This you could also run, but I will show you why I think this is the superior one. And in the advanced combo, you will always be able to get this on your field. So, okay, let's hop into the combo guides and I will first show you the basic combo. So, let me show you the basic combo. We have like randomly drawn two Rika Kong Kongs, which uh, we have two in the deck for, but I will explain to you in which part of the combo this would normally come up. So, we have our one card starter, the Sunseed Genius Loki. What we want to do first here is you normal summon the Loki and go into your Sun Avalon Dryas the tree. And just so that Maxi is not annoying us, we will then just uh, also chain it here so we have it out of the hand. Okay, so Sun Avalon Dryas will now activate and search us uh, the spell, uh, the Sun Vine Sewing that I've talked about. Next thing you want to do is activate the Sewing. Sewing will not activate and as you can see you can also summon your Loki, but we will summon the Twin. I would advise you to summon, uh, so so because this is a long combo, I would advise you to basically always summon the pieces in the same spot so you can better remember the combo. Two effects are now activated. The Sun Sea Twin will now resummon this from the graveyard and this will summon a Sun Avalon Link monster or Sun Vine monster from our extra deck. I would suggest you activate this first, so you can chain block this effect with your tree here. So your opponent can now not ghost bell you if he wanted to. This will activate first and you will choose Sunvine Healer and summon it to the field. Then this will activate resummoning the Loki. Then now Sunvine Healer will activate because if this card is special summoned, you can target one Sav a Sun Avalon Link monster on the field and gain life. We can do this uh, targeting the Dryas. You don't need to, this is not necessary, but it's like 300 extra free points. The next thing you want to do is you're going to use these two here to go into your Aroma Seraphy Jasmine. This is a really interesting core card, uh, which I now realize I have not read to you. So let's do that now. You need two plant monsters and it says if your life points are higher than your opponents, this card and any plant monster it points to cannot be destroyed by battle. So this is a bonus effect of this 8300 here, but it doesn't really matter. You can tribute one monster this card points to, so both of them here. Special summon one plant monster from your deck in defense position. And then the other effect is, you can only use this effect of Aroma Seraphy once per turn. The other effect is once per turn, if you gain life points, add one plant monster from your deck to your head. We will use both of them. And keep in mind, this is important, it will come up in the combo. The second part here is not once per turn. This is once per turn because it says you can only use this effect of Aroma Seraphy Jasmine once per turn. So once there is a card that mentions its name, it's hard once per turn. Even if you summon another copy, you can't use it again. 
this is not hard once per turn. This is once per turn per copy because the name is not mentioned here. So if you summon another copy of Jasmine, you can use this effect again and we will in the combo line. Okay, we have this here. The next thing you want to do, you want to make a tree with this here. This is important because you want to make a second healer now and healer can only be made with a normal monster. So don't do it the other way around. Then you make a second healer and you know already know the drill. The healer is special summoned so you can target a Sun Avalon Link monster and gain life points. We target this, gain another 300 and now this effect activates. As you can see it says once per turn if you gain life points add one plant monster. This is now activated. You want to add Lily Borea here. If you have Lady Borea in your hand, you can also add Mudan the Ricker Fairy. But firstly, learn the basic combo and then you will understand which pieces are missing. Lady Borea is the thing that you want to do to search here first. Activate Lady Borea and now you can target any of these cards. But I would suggest you target either this or this. Let's take the Loka here, you summon the Lily and equip it. The reason for it is that you now need to tribute a monster to search and you will tribute this, the equipped card. If you, for example, put this or this as the equipped card, you might, if you don't pay attention, tribute this or this here because they are the same as the cards in the graveyard and then your combo is basically done. So it's not done, but it's it's basically, you will have less M board than you would have if you had not made the mistake. So we will send this to the graveyard now to search this Colosseum. We have talked about this, this Colosseum will now be activated to search us a Therion King Regulus, which we will summon in a moment. You want to say yes and add the thing Therion, Reg uh, the Therion King Regulus here. Then we activate Jasmine, we tribute the healer, not the tree, we will need the tree in a moment and we will summon the, um, let me think for a moment so I don't make it, we summon the Lone Fire Blossom here. The Lone Fire Blossom will now be able to tribute a monster, the Lady Borea, because we need her in the grave for the Therion King Regulus, and this will summon Rika Petal. So it's important here, don't use the Petal now, because if you use Petal now, you are plant locked. First, go for your Regulus. Regulus, target the Lady Borea, then summon the guy in attack position, because it's stronger in attack position, doesn't have a lot of defense, equip it, and you can see he has 3 5 attack, which is a lot. Then you want to activate Rika Petal here. Now you are plant locked. You add your move done at this point. You want to add it to hand, not send it to the graveyard. Add it to the hand. So we have Mudan, but the other thing that we need is Snowdrop the Ricker Fairy. Just pretend that we do not have the Ricker Concords in hand and do not have the Ricker Princess in hand, okay? So now we need to once again activate the Jasmine. So we need another Jasmine. This is the first thing we will do now. You can use this one here, the Petal and the Lone Fire Blossom to make another Jasmine here. So now we need to gain life points to trigger the Jasmine again to search the other missing Ricker card that we still need for the combo. You can now activate Sunseed Twin in the graveyard. Now we have to tribute a Link Monster. Tribute the Aroma Seraphy Jasmine up here because we have already used her. She's now tributed. And now we can resummon the healer. And you know the drill because there is a tree here, we can target the tree. This is why you definitely need to keep the tree around until this point here. This activates again and now we search Snowdrop the Ricker Fairy. At this point you can do different things. You can now summon the Mudan or you can now make your Bangalancer. It doesn't matter. You can do it the other way around. You can do it this way. It doesn't matter. Let's just make the Bangalancer now. You want to make the Bangle Lancer use this level 2 and now it doesn't matter which one you use, you can use the tree, it does not matter. We make the Malias which is a link free and now will revive the Sunseed Genius Loci. So you can basically see where this goes to. You can now use the Malias and whatever one of these monsters here to make your Bangle Lancer. It doesn't matter which one you use here. So now we have our Regulus established. Um, from the point that you have your Regulus established, you are basically, uh, you have a negate that for example if he Nibiru you, though he could have Nibiru you earlier, or if he, I don't know, ashes you at this point, I don't know, you can then negate this with Regulus sending Lady Borea, okay? So we have Regulus and we have Bangalance, two of our things that we want on the end field. Next thing we want to do is summon Mudan the Ricker Fairy. You tribute the healer and then summon the Mudan. And here's where you would normally search your Rika Konkon. So you can only now search Glamour or Sheet because we already have the Konkon. But in the normal combo you would now search your Konkon, okay? Because we have the Konkon, you can now search your Sheet. In the normal combo, if you would not have any of these, you could not get the Trap card, okay? But if you have Konkon, Con or the other spell card, then you can get the trap card, which is nice. This is an additional interruption, but I won't put it on the field because it's not part of the end board if you have the 
only normal loci combo. So only starting with this card here, you won't have the trap, so I won't place it. Next thing is you will play the field spell, which you have searched via your Mudan. We had it already. And then what you will do next is you activate the field spell, tributing um, or targeting, uh, sorry, not tributing. You activate your field spell and because you have a Rika card on the field, you can set a spell card. And now you activate the spell card. You have to tribute something because you want to search two cards. You tribute your Mudan, not the Bangalore at this point. Then we will take the Primula, which is level four. And now we are able to add another level four, which is Princess. You can see we already have the Princess in hand, but just imagine we haven't. And because we have tributed one of our own monsters, we can uh, special summon the Primula. This is a level four. Rika Princess, activate effect, because this can be special summoned at any time. And now we have two level fours. Now you want to make Rika Queen Strenna here. We will do this now. Doesn't matter where you summon her and then you want to use the effect of Rika Queen Strana. Doesn't really matter what you put to the graveyard here but you would basically put the princess always because now you have a monster ne uh, a monster negate in the in the graveyard. Even though we will in a moment tribute the Strana. So this will go in the graveyard even though you detach the wrong card. But just detach the princess here. You can get now a card back to the hand. We will take Lone Fire Blossom. This is important because in the normal combo only with the Lokai you would not have this here. You would not have the second Rika princess. Now we need to tribute this for the snowdrop and that's why we need this second card here because I already told you you can only activate this when you can summon a second card. So we activate this, just pretend Rika princess isn't there, you will tribute the Strenna here. Then we will take the Lone Fire because we don't have the Princess. And now we have these on the field. Now this will activate in the grave and we can summon an XYZ from our Exo deck. Choose the Sacred Beast Tree Hypertron and then click yes because then this will be attached to this as material. What we can do now and which this will be part of the advanced combo. What you can do, you don't have to do it. You can activate this effect again. This is not hard once per turn because we obviously have activated this before as you have noticed. If you get a new copy on the field, you can activate it once again. Tribute this thing and then you can activate this again to add another monster from the graveyard, for example the Lone Fire Blossom here, to this as material. It doesn't really matter because on your opponent's turn you will only be able to activate this once to negate a monster effect, but for example you would now be able to on your next turn also negate again. And then we can summon another monster. Let's just summon the Loka here. It doesn't matter which one you summon. So now this has two materials, two monster negate materials instead of one. But keep in mind you can only activate the negation once, so for the next turn it doesn't help us. But it's uh, quite a, a, a bit of a better line. Then you want to activate Snowdrop of the Rika Fairy targeting itself to make everything level 8. And now we can summon the last piece of our end board. Using these here, always put her in the defense because she has a lot of defense. Um, the teardrop, the Rika Queen. And this is our end board. In this version, because we managed or we, we randomly had the Rika Conkon in hand, we could now also set the trap here. But I won't because... In theory, we don't have the trap. So what you have now here is you have a bounce um, with your Bengal Lancer, you have a monster negate with your Sacred Tree Beast, and if you now would, for example, I mean, in this case we can do it. I will only show you, okay? This is not part of the normal combo, but we could replace this Kong Kong with this Kong Kong, activating um, a spell card. Oh, okay. I I thought this was uh, this was um, is this once per turn. Ha! Huh. I'm not sure why this didn't happen because I thought we would be able to add another spell card to this as material, but okay. Just ignore what I did here. So what you have now is the bounce from the Bengal Lancer, you have the um, monster negate from the from the uh, tree beast and you have the tribute and opponent's monster from the tiered of Rika. You have an omni negate from the King Regulus and then you also have Rika Princess which is a monster negate and keep in mind that because you have Konkon on the field you can also tribute an opponent's monster to activate this effect or if you have the trap set here you could also tribute an opponent's monster for this effect here. So that is quite nice. You have a lot of power on your end board and normally an opponent will not be able to break this M board. So let's hop over into the advanced combo which will end up on an even better board though I'm not quite sure why I never saw this because this also only needs the first starter here also only needs the Sunseed Genius Loci. So let's hop on in the advanced combo. Okay, let me show you the advanced combo. The advanced combo needs you to have uh, your Rose Whip in the deck. So the um, plant monster I showed you in the 60 card version. This is the 60 card version, but you will see Rose Whip in a moment and I will explain to you what that means. So. 
The cool thing is that you can see the combo now again we already have the Sunvine Sowing in hand so we will summon Lokai. Then we will go Lokai into the Dryas and this will search us the second Sunvine Sowing. If our opponent would Ash us here that would be nice for us because we already have Sunvine Sowing. If you want to Ash your opponent Rika player you always want to Ash this one here not the tree because this one you could only activate once per turn. The tree I could activate again and search, um, uh, search again. So now we activate this one you know the drill. We summon the twin. This time I will go over this a bit faster only to show you where this combo um, differs from the other one and ends on a stronger board than the other one. Quite significantly stronger in my opinion. Uh, we will go healer. We will go and once again we will pretend that we only have uh, the low Kai. Um, yeah. Because the Sunrise Soul we obviously did search with our tree. We will go Jasmine here with these two, make her with uh, these two cards here. Uh, and then you want to make another tree with uh, the Sunsea Twin. Now we want to heal again, so this effect will activate and we can search our Lady Borea. Make a healer. We are making a healer, healing ourselves by targeting the tree. Target the tree. This activates, not once per turn, keep in mind, if you can summon another one. And search Lily Borea. Same thing as always, I will show you where this differs. Then you go summon the Lily, target one of these, so you don't uh, tribute the wrong card, which this would, would be bad. Then you tribute the Loci to search this Coliseum. So now you can see why you basically will never have the Disc Colosseum on your end board because you will replace the Disc Colosseum with uh, the Rika spell in a moment, but it can happen. Then uh, next thing you want to do is you want to tribute, not the tree, always the healer, we need the tree. And then you want to summon your Lone Fire Blossom, which this one will be very important for the advanced combo in a moment. Send this to the graveyard and then we need Rika Petal. I always place a her, but obviously it doesn't matter. Next thing we want to do is the King Regulus line. Now we have an Omni Negate on the board, but unfortunately we can't be saved from Nibiru. This is not possible, though um, nobody's playing Nibiru. We activate the petal and the cool thing about this hand is that you can see uh, now we are basically missing so we have no extra cards here we have to do the full combo correctly next thing you want to do is make your second aroma Serafi yasmine with these two cards and put her here in the link zone then you want to activate the effect of twin in the grave tribute the aroma Seraphy that you have already used so you can resummon the healer healer will activate and you will heal your tree and therefore you can now search your second missing card which this is snowed out the rika fairy so maybe you have already realized this but if you have one of these for example in the hand then you can search something else or if you have a Lady Borea already in hand you don't then need to search these you can search something else from these searches or you could just uh, decide to not use the second Aroma Seraphy Jasmine so you could save this here then you have a second Jasmine in the extra deck and you don't need to use her because maybe you already have the Rika Queen or have the Mudan in the hand then you don't need two searches this is only if you only have the Lokai and nothing else to support you now we will make Bengal Lancer and in this version of the combo Bengal Lancer is very important. What's important about him is the second effect that allows you to resummon him from the graveyard. Now we will look at this in a moment. So we will get back the Loka here and then we can make our Bengal Lancer. So the thing is with the what we are doing right here we will have an extra body. So Bengal Lancer. Next thing you want to do you want to activate your Mudan. You can tribute your Dryas now here and then uh, whoops there goes the Mudan. We will search for our Konkon. Next thing to do is activate Konkon and then you want to search the other spell card which will get you into your level 4 monsters and your two level 4 monsters. That set this here and now here begins the different part of the combo. What we have done in the last combo is tributing the Mudan. What we will do now is tributing the Bengal Lancer because Bengal Lancer can be resummoned by us banishing Link monsters from the graveyard. And this allows us to keep the Mudan on the field which allows us a cool play in a moment I will show you. So Rika Glamour we will now tribute the Bengal Lancer up to the if he goes and now we will add the um, the Primula and also the princess. A quick little thing here. If you do this it's important to have this on 
auto or on on because if this is on off because maybe you don't want to activate your maxi in hand you cannot activate this effect here so if you come to this point in the combo have this on auto or on on okay we will summon her we will also summon the princess same thing as always the only difference as of right now is that we have the bangalance on the grave and mudan on the field which normally mudan wouldn't be on the field anymore you use these here to make your rika queen strenner um, Strenner can then re-add you and this time it's important that you so for the last combo you didn't really need to add the lone fire blossom but this time we need the lone fire blossom so now we have two plant monsters in hand as you can see we are continuing with Snowdrop the Ricker Fairy tributing the Strenner and now we can summon the lone fire blossom here it goes and the Ricker Queen Strenner and the difference is now let's first activate this and I will explain to you in a moment we can now make this guy here same as always we can add the material to him okay so the difference is that we have three monsters now so what we can do here is activate the lone fire blossom tribute itself and then yeah you can do this once again to have another body um, but you don't really need to but you can if you want to so here's where the combo differs we add this and now because so what you have to understand in what is happening next in the combo the next thing that happens in the combo is that we make uh, level 8 monsters and make the queen but in the normal combo you don't have the mudan here it's already gone so you have to use whatever you summon here to make your queen but now we have a free summon basically and now we can summon our naturia rose whip in defense position it's important it has one seven defense this says once again your opponent can only activate one spell trap card each turn so for example if your opponent activates a spell or trap card you negate this with the regulus then he can no longer activate spell and traps and this is really important because this is a monster negate and the the prince in the grave is also a monster negate so on your end board you only have one card the regulus that can negate a, 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 sp a spell or trap but if you have the rose whip you can only activate one spell or trap this is obviously also very important if you play against back row decks so for example your labyrinth opponent sets five against you on his second turn and passes over he wants to activate all his cool traps but he can only activate one and the one that he can activate you can negate with regulus so now we want to go to our end board we activate snowdrop the ricker fairy targeting herself so we have level eight monsters now we make uh, the queen here with uh, the Mudan that we still have on the field because we have tributed the Bengal Lancer. And now the last thing that we need to do is resummon our Bengal Lancer from the graveyard by banishing um, uh, this here. It doesn't really matter. So by banishing cards and now we can... Um, no, we won't, don't want to activate this. Okay. So and as you can see right now, we have this one on the field, this one, the Bengal Lancer and the King Regulus. So same as last time, but we have a Rose Whip in addition on the field. And this all happened with the same starting point only with a genius loci so I, I i always saw this combo without this part here i'm not quite sure why i i saw that i saw this basic combo from the european champion from jessica robinson where she got into this but without the rose whip i'm not quite sure maybe i missed it or i don't know i'm not sure why this wasn't anywhere in any videos but this is obviously way stronger than is the other thing and the only downside to this is that you had to banish these here and that of course that's the only downside which i think the trade-off is worth it that if this leaves the field now if your opponent kills this somehow this will be banished so in the other combo if this gets destroyed you could then resummon it on your next turn but i think it's not that important because this deck wants to build this end board and then win the game you don't want to play you don't want to get your board your board broken and then have to play on your next turn because as you can see we are only left with four extra deck monsters and they are basically not that great we can't even do the one turn ki uh, the, the, the kill combo which i will show you next so i think the the winning strategy of the deck is that you want to build an end board that your opponent cannot break and having the roll swoop online that your opponent can only activate one spell trap each turn is amazing so in this 40 card version that i had this was not included i would include this now because now i know this full combo here so we can get this end board here which he can only activate one spell or trap which you can negate then you have two monster negates you have a bounce you have a tribute um you have yeah monster gets bounce tribute and your opponent will basically not be able to get through this and oftentimes you also will have the trap because you have bonus stuff in your hand we only had uh, we only could work with the loca here so this is the advanced end board let me now in the end show you how you can kill your opponent on turn two so i have now let my opponent do his thing and now i will show you how you can kill your opponent on turn two with only the sunseed genius loca summon the loca then you activate your dryers so this is the easiest way to kill your opponent but you won't always be able to and 
if you try this a few times, you will understand why this deck is not that great going second, because this can fail at a lot of points. But this is still the best way to quickly kill your opponent. You go your basic line that you basically always use until a specific point, which I will show you in a moment. Uh, same thing as always, you use this to resummon this, and then you use the tree to summon the healer, so this is basic. Nothing too special here. Summon healer. You can use the healer now, but let's just not use her because we don't need to. Let's just activate Maxi so we are rid of this guard and it doesn't always get to us here. Okay. Next thing you want to do is you want to make your Melias and you specif uh, specifically want to use these three here on the bottom. Make the Melias, put it here, and Melias can now, as always, activate its effect to resummon the Loki. This is important, you need this one here, otherwise it won't work, because now you can make this here, Thresher. And I told you that I will talk about Thresher when we come to it, so it's now time. Thresher has the effect when it's summoned, if this card is special summoned, you can target once an Avalon Link monster, the Melias. Uh, on the field, this card gains attack equal to that monster's Link rating, Link 3, by 800. So we will target this, Melias, and now we have 3200 attack. And now we can use Melias, which has an additional effect. Once per turn, you can target one Sunvine Link mod, so you control that this card points to, the Thresher. This turn, it can attack a number of times each battle phase up to the number of Sun Avalon Link monsters that we control. So in this case, two. So this can now attack two times. And what we can do now in addition, we can use this here, because we don't need it any longer, and this here to make a Bengal Lancer. Note here that we, in this version, because we have it, we could also now summon the Rika Princess, we can summon the Lily Borea, which also has 2-4 attack. So you basically never only have the Loka, you only have this. You are basically always able to put a bit more attack on the field, though we don't need it. So what you can do now, you can use the Bengal Lancer's effect to bounce something back to your opponent's hands. So this is already gone. And now you're asking yourself, how is this game? This isn't even game, right? So. It is, I will show you how this is game in a moment. So in, in this version, it wouldn't be. In this version, we would need our Lily Borea. Let me just do that. And this this already shows you how this, um, this combo is a bit vulnerable. But what's important is the second effect of the Sunvine Thrasher. If this, when this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle and sends it to graveyard, you can special summon that monster to your zone a link monster points to, uh, a link monster points to. So we want to attack with this first. In this case, it's a swap frog or a tree frog. So we can use this now to resummon this. And this can also attack. In this case, it won't be enough, obviously, because this only has 100 attack. But we can attack with this, we can attack with this, and then Lily Borea would, I think, be able to kill our opponent. Yes. So, of course, we don't always have the Lily Borea, but I think you understand how this works. But you can also see how this has some problems. This is the easiest way to kill your opponent, and it works if the opponent has only one monster on the field, or maybe a monster that is strong and you can resummon, or no monsters on the field. If your opponent has a full field, then this obviously don't work. You have the ability to bounce one monster of your opponent, one open monster, and then you also have the opportunity to kill one monster. So for example, let's say our opponent only had the, what has he, had he on the field, the Zephyros, right? Let's say there was only the Zephyros on the field. It has 1-6 attack, then we could have attacked over Zephyros, uh, do 1-6 damage, resummon the Zephyros, and then that would have been enough, 1-6, uh, 1-6 um, uh, again, then this would have been enough to kill our opponent. Or if, for example, he had two open monsters, Bengal Lancer could bounce one, we could kill the Zephyros, resummon the Zephyros, and then kill him. But obviously, you can also, with a 3200 attack, kill even stronger monsters. For example, if our opponent had a Mirror Jade, we could kill the Mirror Jade, resummon the Mirror Jade, and then kill our opponent. So, this is pretty good in killing your opponent, but you can also see how this can lead to some problems. Um, this is just not the best deck going second. Maybe you can break your opponent's board with evenly matched before you do your uh, next step, though. That then you would obviously be in main phase 2, so don't do this then. If you break your opponent's boards with evenly matched, then just use your local and make your basic combo so you end on the board I showed you before, the strong board, and then you will be able to win the game. So this is all. I know it was a long guide. I hope this helped. I think I have talked about everything. Um, the other things that you have to learn, you have to learn by playing the game. So there will be games where you don't have access to all of your cards, where you don't have access to your Sun Seed and your Sun Avalon stuff. Then just go with the Rika stuff and try to establish, for example, the Teardrop, the Rika Fairy, or try to establish your Queen Strena uh, onto the board. Maybe you get your Therion King on the board. You can get the Field Spell on the board. Maybe 
maybe the trap and then you have a lot of interruptions that can also win you the game. But this is everything that you have to know to start playing Rickerson Avalon and be successful with it and of course the rest you have to learn via gameplay and I wish you a lot of fun. This is a really really fun deck. I was first a bit turned off by the deck because I wasn't really in love with the artwork of the Ricca cards here but I really like the artwork of the monsters that end up on the board. Also it's really cool but you have to learn the deck. You have to understand what you have to do if you get interrupted at certain points. You have to understand what each card does in the combo so that you can can basically think of what you can do next. So for example if your uh, Muda on the Ricca Fairy gets impermed and you can't get to your field spell then this locks you out from a lot of opportunities because then you can't get your spell which means you can't get to level 4s which means you can't get your Strena which means you can't probably get your tiered of the Ricca Queen. But then you can maybe maybe think about, okay, what can I get? What can I make? Maybe because you have to plant monsters, you can make your Sylvan Dance Beyond, search the three uh, top cards of your deck, and then maybe you find uh, more monsters that you can use. Maybe you find two level four monsters that you can then use to make your Ricca Queen Strena that you can then use to go into your Sacred Tree Beast. So you have to learn this deck, obviously after this guide, but this should equip you with everything. If you like the guide and you like my channel, please consider subscribing, hitting the thumbs up and the notification bell. This helps me out a lot. I hope this helped you and we will see each other in the next one.